In this video, I'll tell you about the three kinds of subatomic particles. We'll talk about how the discovery of electrons and protons changed our understanding of atomic structure. I am going to stop before we get to the model that chemists currently use, because we will cover that in depth later this semester. John Dalton wasn't the first person to wonder about the smallest bits of matter, but his proposal was one of the first atomic models based on experimentation. Dalton believed that matter consisted of solid spherical atoms. He suggested that each element was made up of atoms that were identical to each other, but distinguishable from atoms of different elements. He thought atoms could not be broken down into any smaller particles, and that atoms of one element could never be transmuted into a different element. His theory also included the idea that atoms could combine in simple whole number ratios to form compounds. Dalton's model definitely had some faults, but it was the preeminent theory for nearly a century. Around the beginning of the 20th century, a scientist named J.J. Thompson conducted a series of experiments using cathode ray tubes. If you've heard of CRT computer monitors or seen an old-fashioned bulky television set, those used cathode ray tubes to project images onto a screen. Thompson wasn't interested in making pictures, but he was interested in the behavior of the cathode rays when electromagnetic forces were applied to them. Bringing a magnet near a cathode ray tube causes the ray to deflect. This behavior occurs because the ray is made up of charged particles which interact with electromagnetic fields. At the start of his experiments, Thomson wouldn't have known about the particles in the ray, but based on his results, he determined that the ray was composed of negatively charged particles that weighed only a tiny fraction of the mass of hydrogen. Thompson had found electrons and was able to calculate their charge to mass ratio. The absolute charge of an electron was determined later by a scientist named Millikan, who suspended tiny drops of oil between charged plates. Thompson had established that atoms contained electrons, but nothing else was known about the structure of the atom at that time. He proposed the plum pudding model. Tiny electrons were embedded in a positively charged sphere. If he hadn't been so very British, he might have called it the blueberry muffin model, where electrons are distributed like berries in a cake-like positive material. The early 1900s were a very productive time for chemists and physicists. Thompson's plum pudding model was the best guess they had about atomic structure, for only about five years. Ernest Rutherford was working towards a better understanding of Thompson's positive matter when he arranged an experiment to shoot heavy particles at a thin sheet of gold foil. These particles were much larger than electrons, but still a good deal smaller than the gold atoms. He expected the particles to pass through the foil with only minor deflections, and most of the particles did just that but a few of the particles didn't. A small number of particles hit the screen and bounced off in different directions. Rutherford realized that this meant that atoms were mostly made up of empty space with a solid core. He called the core the nucleus and suggested that the nucleus held nearly all of the mass of an atom, but occupied only a relatively tiny amount of space. Rutherford went on to say that the empty space around the nucleus held the atom's electrons. The electrons were moving around the nucleus, although he didn't really specify where or how they moved. He initially said that the nucleus contained protons, which are particles with an opposite charge to electrons, but a much greater mass. A few years later, one of his students proposed the existence of neutrons, particles with no charge and a mass similar to that of a proton. Neutrons also reside in the nucleus, and they allow the positively charged protons to stay close to each other. Rutherford's nuclear model was accepted for, again, roughly five years, 
By 1913, Niels Bohr had described a refined model with more information about electron motion, and shortly after that, the quantum mechanical theory was proposed. The Rutherford model still isn't perfect, but it doesn't really have any major issues. Modern, most modern atomic theory just goes into a lot greater detail. We will, again, be covering these more recent theories towards the end of our course. Today, chemists assume that atoms contain three types of subatomic particles. The electron was discovered first and is the only particle that resides outside of the nucleus. Its mass is so very small, even compared to the other tiny particles, that in most cases we round it to zero AMUs. An AMU um, is an atomic mass unit, and using AMUs avoids an awful lot of scientific notation. 1 AMU is roughly 1 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. We typically also use a relative charge instead of an absolute charge, again, just to avoid the scientific notation. Electrons are negatively charged. Protons were the next particle discovered. They're found in the center of the atom, in that nucleus, and have a mass of approximately 1 AMU. They also have a positive charge. Neutrons were the last discovered particles. They are roughly the same size as protons and they have zero charge. <laughs>